This is a fluid ion engine. I found a design online and I decided to build it. It's basically a hot air engine that uses a literal liquid piston. Pretty cool, right? It's a science toy, but is this useful in real life? This video was brought to you by Liquid Piston, a company that is changing the future of internal combustion engines and a company in which you should consider investing in. Links in the description. Actually, the, the first idea was a liquid piston. That's why the name of the company. Literally like a liquid piston? Literally. If you think of a cylinder, like a bottle, right? Exactly. You have a liquid there. A liquid X as a piston. Uh, you can raise level or you can let it fall and it will act exactly like a piston. Sure. So the gas above the liquid will be compressed, will be expanded, you can combust it, you can do anything you want with it. It's a beautiful system. It's the only system that we consider that was able to execute this cycle, high efficiency hybrid cycle, 100% in theoretical sense. This is Nikolai Shkolnik, a Ukrainian physicist that had this weird idea of cherry-picking the best features of three different types of combustion engine and then Frankensteining them together into one supreme combustion engine. I grab the air as much as I can, I squeeze it, I hold it at the constant volume, I inject the fuel, I combust it, and then I expand it at the volume higher than when I started. That's the cycle. It's very simple. That all sounds very simple on paper. There's only a teeny tiny problem. There's no engine on this planet that can pull that off. Not all at the same time, at least. Like I said before, the piston and crankshaft mechanism is still limited. That's the reason why Nikolai thought of the liquid piston engine in the first place, because it would be the perfect solution to run his theoretical cycle. Unfortunately, he would have to reinvent the wheel to make it work, which would be really, really, really hard. We never built it. Wait, 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 wait. It's been done. It's used today in the fish processing industry. I think it's called a Humphrey pump. So it, um, in, in order to move fish around when they're processing the, the fish, they'll, they'll combust over the tank and, and use that force to, to move. That is funny around. because it sounds like the idea uh, like a 10 year old would have, you know, just well, <laughs> explode it and push it. But you know what? This uh, it turns out to be much more gentle than mechanically yeah. pushing stuff around. So, the liquid piston is great to move fish around, but not practical for an internal combustion engine. Physicists tend to dream of theoretical solutions, but the people that actually solve the problems are the engineers. This is Alec, Nikolai's son and an engineer from MIT. Our engine actually dates back to, I think, 1806. It was a steam engine back then. And then Felix Weinkel put out a book and he went through a whole bunch of different rotary compressors, pumps, different types of rotary machines that could be made into an engine. And our engine was in, in his book and he said, you can't, you can't do Make it. it work. You can't do <laughs> it. <laughs> so we, we kind of figured it out. It's an oversimplification to say that you guys are just doing an inverted Wankel engine because the cycle is completely different, right? Correct. The Wankel engine still uses an auto cycle. Correct. Yeah, so a, a four-stroke will have one combustion event per two revolutions of the shaft, so the, the piston has to come up and down twice. The X-Mini, with a single rotor, it's performing three cycles simultaneously. So we end up with three combustion events per two revolutions of the shaft. It's very much like a three-cylinder engine. You can think of it kind of that way. And then the new engine we're working on, the XTS, is a two-stroke implementation. So it actually has six firing events per revolution of How the rotor. How do you do that? Both sides of the rotor do combustion. At the same time? Um, out of phase, but uh, so that that's combustion, right? And then combustion again. In, on, on the four stroke, this is doing intake and exhaust. On the two stroke, this is doing combustion. Wow. Sponsor time. On a serious note though, this is a company that can actually change the world. Let's stop trying to optimize a technology that was invented 150 years ago and move on to a new technology that can efficiently make the most out of the limited fuels we have to produce energy and move us around. If you want to help, you can invest in the future of the liquid piston engine by using the link in the description down below. Our engine can be competitive with engines anywhere that they're used today. A uh, 10 kilowatt generator, uh, it, it requires a trailer to move around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so big and heavy, it weighs like a, a thousand pounds. So just imagine the impact if we can make that five or 10 times smaller and lighter. It's a game changer for the military. You know, for this reason, they're extremely excited about us and uh, 
they, they've been making significant investments into us. We started working with DARPA, which is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency in 2016. We kind of graduated from working with DARPA and now we're working with, with the Army on substantial contracts. So in my head, I hear about this engine that is much smaller and lighter, but at the same time has the same power as a three-cylinder engine? I really wanted to try it out, so I did. a lot of fun riding that go-kart, but the X-Mini is a 4 horsepower engine and a go-kart normally needs a 5 to 13 horsepower engine, which means that go-kart is a little bit too heavy for that engine. It also means that if somehow I can take that engine from the go-kart and put it in something lighter, I can go much faster. Luckily, they had a crappy scooter laying around with a 2 horsepower conventional engine that I promptly removed. Actually, I'm pretty sure it was a weed whacker engine because the acceleration on the scooter was a bit... how can I put this nicely? Not goad. It was bad. It was very slow. The next step was putting this on top of this, and for that I needed a mounting plate. The liquid piston shop had a lot of cool toys available, so I used them. And by I used them, I mean Gary and Keith used them. They have decades of experience with CNC machines, while I make CNC machines scream. I got to design the mounting plate though, and I also designed this bearing mount with a cool pattern. I thought it was cool. Gary thought it was a waste of machining time. Gary doesn't understand that not everything in life needs to be quick and efficient. Sometimes you just want to take your time, you know? You want to go with the flow and make things cool. And also make yourself feel like you're contributing. Talking about cool, this black part here is a 3D printed shroud to cool the engine and also get more air into the engine. Also the exhaust manifold is metal 3D printed. I didn't think this was 3D printing enough, so I added more 3D printing by using their 3D printers to 3D print a connector to rotate the carburetor. Carbure. Car. I never. I can never say this word. Carburetor. Rotate the carburetor 90 degrees. It was sticking out too much. And I also 3D printed a clamp to hold the fuel tank. After assembling the engine on the mounting plate, we fixed all of that onto the scooter using cheap aluminium bars. I know, it sounds sketchy, but not everything needs to be 3D CNC machine printed reinforced with Inconel carbon fiber titanium. Sometimes you ought to keep it simple and make it work. Yoki Samyu, the way of the tomatoes. For transmission we used a go-kart clutch and a chain. The scooter already came with a two-speed gearbox that was... How can I put this nicely? It was bad. It was not good. It was geared down too much, but limited the max speed. A little bit. Now, you might have noticed this on the side of the fuel tank. This happened because Alec was bragging about the fact that their engine can run on almost anything. So I asked him, can it run on vodka? And he said, I don't know, but you can try it. So I did. Here's the thing, it runs pretty good. Uh, the problem is you cannot take your hand from the, the accelerator. If you take it just a little bit, it's like, whoa, you get, whoa. So in the curves, I would like, I had to go accelerating just a little bit. Even the curves, I couldn't break. <laughs> 
it's, it's running so good now it's running amazing i don't know if you guys want to try it but this is is worth the while <laughs> I love I love your camera work. It's just like <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Did Intaxa just ran one of the most sophisticated internal combustion engines on Moonshine? Yes, and it was a lot of fun. Going fast is fun, but building stuff is funner. Is that a word? If you like building stuff and you need a new tool on your arsenal, I have the perfect thing for you. On my last video, I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will win a brand new 3D printer. Um, yeah, that's everything for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!